All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, and welcome to today's episode of Andy Before Japandi. And in today's episode, guys, we're gonna be talking about what got me interested in Japan in the first place. So strap your seatbelts in, because it's story time. So we begin our story in the early to mid 90s. Now, my cousins who growing up were like a second family to me, they were a primarily military family, um, mostly Navy, and they got orders out to Yokosuka, Japan. And during that time, they would send me back home in America a bunch of little things that they would get from around town, little trinkets and souvenirs and stuff like that. And it was really cool to see those sorts of things because keep in mind, back in the early to mid 90s, there really was no internet as far as in the mainstream goes. Uh, certainly not in Midwestern Ohio back back then. The only real resources I had that were Japan related were stuff I could find at the library, you know, books, encyclopedias, things like that, and the stuff that my cousins would send me. So I thought it was just like, really super cool to like look at stuff like the coins and I remember getting some Lego sets from over there and then reading the little pamphlets and stuff inside but it was all written entirely in Japanese and I'm just like whoa this is so cool so fast forward to the late 90s early 2000s and that's when the big anime boom in America happened so we got a whole bunch of cool anime from Japan like uh, Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, the whole tsunami block basically during that time and you know got into anime in like middle school slash high school um, which has continued even today so you know me super weeb fast forward a little bit more to the mid 2000s and that's when YouTube first came onto the scene and from there we got a lot of the early wave of J vloggers Japan vloggers so guys like Tokyo Kuni uh, Tokyo Swan, uh, My Argonauts, uh, Busan Kevin came a little bit later, but he was around that time-ish. And of course you had such people like Miss Hannah Manks, who was uh, studying abroad in Japan at that time. So, And from there, the whole dream of coming out to Japan became a lot more relatable because I would see these normal people just going out to Japan and having a good, good time. And before... I had always wanted to visit Japan, but uh, the plane ticket money was just too high and you know we didn't have enough money growing up to be able to support something like that. So I always thought it was just kind of a far off dream in the distance. And when I saw all these new wave of J vloggers, um, it became a lot more um, relatable. You know, it became you know, less of a dream and more of a, I can do this. I just gotta save up contact a school, see if I can do a study abroad program, get the ball rolling, make it happen. You know, I went through some stuff in school during the first time around as far as university goes, mostly uh, financial problems. And then the American recession happened in the late 2000s, very early 2010s. Um, then from there, joined the U.S. Navy 2010. And in 2013, got orders out to Yokosuka, Japan. And was there from 2013 to 2015, recorded a whole bunch of videos. The original Andy Japandi series was recorded all out in that area and uh, just had a great time. And then when my time was up in the Navy in 2015, came back here to the States, you know, tried to make my post Japan life really work out, but uh, I still felt like I had that, that itch to come back out to Japan and, you know, continue to do my thing out there. Just even though I left Japan, I felt like Japan really never left me. That's why I'm creating this series to help document my eventual return to Japan in 2019. So this is kind of giving you guys some context as to who I am, why I like Japan so much, and uh, you know what I'm doing to get back out to Japan. So yeah, that's pretty much all I gotta say in this video. So with that said, this is Andy S. Sign it for now, and as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.